So our next step is to work on something that I call gradation. You will have your heavy mass stone. It's your deepest, darkest material. You want to move then to its lightest. So I'm going to take more water. I'm going to work down to the lighter side. So now I'm just using pure clean water and you can see how it went from your mass stone to the lightest color you can get from this color that you used just now. Um, this is easier to work from dark to lighter because you can just add water. Let's say you want to go from lightest to darkest. Let's choose this color. I have it here on my palette. I'm going to put in a lot of water. Like loads. I want it as light as possible. Then I have a very light piece. Like that. To make it a bit darker, I just put a tiny bit of pigment more into this water. And it becomes a bit darker. And so you go and you just put more and more pigment in to get darker radiation or values in your color um thank you birds thank you birds for that and then your master and you can take directly from the pan. See how we move now from our lightest to darker to darker to darker. This is actually not as perfect as I would like it. We can even go more light but darker but darker but darker to the darkest. It depends on what you're working for. So when we tend to paint, we do our base layers in a very lightish kind of vibe with a lot of water we let it dry then we come and work over it with darker colors to glaze it that's how you create contrast because now if you have something like your lightest purple color here to form the highlight of something and you come in with your darker color this side your, your I mean like glazing now, putting a, a, um, more water in there, so let's just blend this out better. It, it becomes a more three dimensional shape because you can see your highlights of the ball where the light is from. You're going to see where the shadow, the darker side is. And just right before the shadow, it becomes a bit lighter again. And then you have your shadow. Just here. Very dark again. That goes into light again. You must excuse me painting in the outdoors. Um, but this is just to show you the basics. Where if you have a light source from this side. The light is shining on this ball. On here you see the highlight of the sun. The light being reflected back to where you get your light source. You're going to have a shadow area. We can even make this darker now. Because it's drying a bit more. Blend it up better so it looks smoother. And just before the highlight or the shadow, you're going to have a little bit of a highlight again because the light is reflected back from this side onto 
your ball or whatever the shape you have that you're busy working with and then you have your shadow that moves from your darkest to your lightest again so let's lift some of this pigment up you can even use your towel or your paper and just lift up some pigment so now you have a almost three-dimensional shape there like so so the perspective is better for you guys It looks almost like a three-dimensional ball, or <laughs> I hope it does, um, because we just manipulated our gradation of colors that we use from a lightest to darkest and also from darkest to lightest. So that's how you can play with your colors and plan where your highlights need to be, plan where your shadows need to be, how you're going to glaze and so forth. I hope that helps you, especially if you're going to work on more three-dimensional things and not flat washes for illustrations and so forth. Um, how to create a shape out of your color. The same works for negative space. Say now, I want a little heart here. You don't have to go draw a heart. You work with your color. And you fill in everything else that you do not want the heart to be with. I did not draw that heart beforehand. I used my color around it to form the shape that I have. I did not go fill in that heart first and then paint around it. I used my background color to create my highlight which is my heart. This is what you have to think about Ooh. as well when you do paint in watercolor is that use the contrast of your negative background space towards your highlight areas to create those highlights. Because when you paint over your white area, you're never going to get the pure white paper back again. No matter how hard you scrub this paint or try to lift it, you need to have your white areas that's where masking fluid and masking tape also helps but try to learn and you do it in this way so if you have a shape it can be just your highlight shape of where your highlight is it doesn't have to be a perfect shape or anything it's just so you know don't go painting them so what you see now is that because i did pigment around it it's going to have harsh lines so what i can do is use a brush again that I cleaned, scrub off and just lift some of this just to soften those edges so let's say this was a highlight on someone's nose or forehead and you don't want those harsh lies, um, highlights but you still want the shape there so use a clean brush and just soften the, the line there I mean the shape is staying, the shape is still a hard shape, my shape has not really changed, I just softened my lines. So on to some color studies. 